These videos will show you how to create a form in Axia. I'm going to show you half in one video, half in the other, because otherwise it takes a little bit of time. So I've created a home page. I've also created a feedback page, and I'll, you'll see why in the next video. Uh, I go to the libraries with all the widgets and I scroll down and you can see there is a section here just for forms. I'm going to show you in this video the first three widgets and in the second video I'll show you the next three widgets. So the first one I want to show you is a text field. So I'll just drag this over here. Best practice is always to add labels to each of the fields. So I'm just going to drag that over and we'll say this is going to be someone's name. How do we make sure it's someone's name? Click on the text field, right click, and you'll see that we have input type. And this is like with HTML where you can determine the type of the input. Text means it's just basically text. Password will create little circles in places in place of the letters and numbers so that no one can see your password by looking over your shoulder. Email is an email. Number will restrict you to a number so that people can't enter text instead. You've got phone number, URL, search to make a little search bar. File will prompt them to upload stuff. Date, month and time. But for now I'm sticking with text. Uh, I can also, you saw that there was an edit text, so you can either right click edit text or you can double click in there. So that might be where you have your placeholder, enter your name here. So that's the text field. Next we have a text area and you can resize that as you need. Uh, there's not really many options open to this because a text area is a text area. You can't change its input type. Um, so what I can do though is double click, edit the text. So enter your message here. Again, I'm gonna drag a label across so that everything is um, makes sense on the final form. So I'll just put message. Okay, so the next one I want to show you is the drop list, which gives you a drop down menu with different options. How do you get to the different options? You can right click edit list items or you can just double click on it. So let's double click. And if you're just adding one or two things, you can click on add. So I might do a person's favorite uh, fruit. So apple, pear, might choose edit many and that way I can just type out a list. Banana and lychee, okay, so I've got four there. Now, it makes sense when you make these drop down lists that there is some sort of, um, there's a logic behind the, the list order. So uh, it might be if you're doing months of the year, you want to do it in chronological order. Um, if you're doing states, again, it might be um, alphabetical order. Anything to make it easy for a person to find the option they're looking for. And it's really good practice to get into this idea of an internal logic. So even where it does not matter what order these appear in, it's good to actually have, um, for instance, it in um, alphabetical order. So you can click on one of these and click on up and down to rearrange them. Another thing that's worth noting is if I leave this checked, so I'm just going to leave that check in there, you see how it actually opens on lychee rather than apple. So if someone is more likely to choose one option than another, you can tick it so that it's the first one that becomes available. Uh, and I'll just add a label here. Uh, what is your favorite fruit? Great. Okay, so that shows you the first three options in the form. In the next video, I'll show you the list box, checkbox, and radio button, um, and how to add a submit button and a feedback form.